できたわよ綺麗な色そりゃバッドミはねでも実際は綺麗なだけの人生なんてないそういうこと Well, I'm just not sure what to feel right now. This episode was amazing, a total roller coaster. Like, seriously. Ups, downs, all around. So, definitely watch this if you haven't. Like, drop what you're doing right now and watch it. This one is awesome. We learn about Chiyuki's memories. We learn what happened to Harada back when Ginty was judging him. We learn what is Mayu's fate. It's awesome, my god. So, I'm gonna throw this spoiler flag right up. So, Ginty. At the beginning, gave Mayu a choice. He said that there was this other guy that he was willing to send to the void. He gave her, Mayu, the choice to send him to the void to bring back Harada's soul. And he basically said, Hey, if you press this button, let me know what you decide. And she was all like, Well, what kind of person is he that I'd be sending to the void? And he was like, What kind of person would be good enough to make you send Harada to the void? And Mayu basically said she wouldn't. And so Ginty knew he had his answer. So that was a cool little moment. But we still didn't know what was going on yet. It was cool though. It was cool. And since the spoiler flag's already up, I'm just going to go right into this. As soon as Mayu had decided that she was going to send that other guy to the void to bring back Harada, like her fate was sealed. He really, really tricked Mayu into showing that she was quite selfish. Because I mean... She was willing to send a random guy to the void just because she wanted Harada back. And so he tricked her, making her think she was going into the reincarnation door. And then he switched it and it was actually the hell door. <laughs> the void door. And he sent them both to the void. And it was actually really devastatingly sad. Like, the moment when Mayu realized she was going to the void and her body started getting torn apart and her memories started going, she was just like crying her eyes out. And then Harada opened his eyes and clearly his soul had like regained itself and Mayu was just so happy. And then they got torn in two. It was, oh God, so bad. They get turned right back into the normal little doll things that they are when they don't have souls in them. But even then, while they were like laying on the ground, like they were holding hands, it was, oh, it was so lovely. And they've both gone to the void. They also explained what kind of place the void is and which is just <laughs> nothing. Like your consciousness keeps going on. You can still continuously think about things, but there's nothing. Like there's nothing around you. You're just constantly falling in darkness, which is a really, like that's the kind of thing. I don't necessarily believe in life after death at all, but that's the kind of thing that like horrifies me <laughs> when I imagine that that might be what's after death and you'll just continuously think about your life and about everything that you did and just continuously forever and ever without having anything to ever do that's horrible and that's what the void is they don't actually completely lose consciousness and disappear which i suppose is another thing that really confuses people because when you're not conscious time just flies by and if time flies by infinitely how does it work but i'm not getting into that because that's the kind of stuff that <laughs> really messes with people's heads Especially mine, late at night when I think about those kind of things. Oh god. Anyway. Episode. Amazing. Mayu. So sad. Harada. So sad. Ginty. Kind of a dick, but I guess he did his job. He was right. I mean, he tricked her into revealing that she would be quite happy to kill anyone. As long as it meant she could be with Harada again. So I guess she kind of deserved the void door. Even though she was just a sweet little teenage girl, it was... Oh, man. This show messed up in this show. The morality thing is just so over the top. Anyway, on to Chiyuki, also known as the black-haired woman, Kurokami. We learned all about her memories, and they were quite sad. She was like a really good ice skater. She loved that book, Shovel, and so she learned to ice skate because of it. She had like little dolls made from the book Shavo. It was so adorable. And yeah, she was really good at ice skating. She won a few competitions while she was young. All of her life was based around ice skating. And then during one competition, she slipped and fell and really like she'd torn her tendons or something or 
really damaged her bones in any, where she just wasn't going to be able to ice skate again. And that's basically what did it for her. She was done. She decided she was going to kill herself then because her whole life was based around the general idea of I'm going to be an ice skater. All her friends were ice skaters. She loved ice skating. It was her dream from when she was, yeah, like three or four. It was everything that she worked on and suddenly it was taken away from her. So she slit her wrists and ended it all. Which is really sad. And yeah, Chiyuki basically was just about done being judged but Deccan decided he hadn't had enough. He wants to know everything about Chiyuki and so he called up Quinn to try and get the rest of Kurokami Chiyuki's memories inside him. And as soon as he called her up, Quinn went to Nona and told her, hey, your plan's working, he's getting all of her memories. And so Nona had obviously planned this from the beginning of giving Chiyuki a bit of her memory back and then with all the time that Chiyuki and Deckham had spent together Nona knew that Deckham was going to want to know everything about her which is quite sweet they're like kind of a little bit of a couple right now so finally after the credits we had a scene in which Nona got caught by Oculus Nona got her message from Quinn saying that Deckham wanted all the memories and that her plan was working so Nona was getting moving to whatever her plan next needs her. And as that happened, Oculus came to her room and said, Hey, I know what you're doing. It was like he didn't even need to say it too much. He just said, Oh, what a fun game you're playing. And then he said, Naughty girl. The flower beard which grabbed Clavis at the end of last episode started to open up again. So it was clear he was about to grab Nona or at least try to. The next episode is called Suicide Tour, which is pretty dark <laughs> it looks like it's going to be a good one Nona's featured in the preview quite a bit so I'm guessing she gets away from Oculus one way or another maybe Oculus doesn't even attack her maybe he just lets her go on her way or maybe he just completely reads her memories to see how far things have gone who knows either way it looks like it's going to be an awesome final episode final rating 9.5 out of 10 and I really hope the final episode is as good as this series has been so far. Because it's just been amazing. So thanks for listening to the end guys. Let me know what you thought in the comments section below. And like and subscribe if you haven't. I will see you next time.